So, this mini scribe drive comes with an MFM to IDE adapter card on it. And one thing that's been on my mind for a little while now is whether or not that adapter card is able to work with other drives. And so today, that's exactly what we're going to be doing using this drive, a Kyocera KC20A, which is actually just a rebranded Lapine Titan. And apparently this is one of the earliest, like, mobile, air quotes, hard drives that were ever made, and so that's interesting. Anyway, we're just going to start this off by disconnecting the card from this drive and putting it on the Kyocera instead. And this is going to be the very first time that I'm doing this, so hopefully nothing goes wrong. And most likely I'll need to run a low-level format with the Kyocera drive once this card is installed as well. Ooh, that's stuck. There we go. There's four screws. Ooh, this one is also stuck. Now, the reason why I'm wondering all this is because this adapter card that takes MFM on one end and talks IDE on the other end, like I already mentioned before, is actually just a Western Digital WD-1003 MFM controller in disguise and the WD-1003 is a pretty bog-standard controller as far as IDE controllers go and so just logically thinking about it it shouldn't be too too hard for anything to not go wrong I guess I don't know I'm just kind of rambling while I'm taking this thing apart and then one last screw. There we go. And I think we yep, we can lift the card up now. So let's disconnect the cables. We're gonna need to Pull out the power cable from the top here. A little bit stuck. Hmm. Yeah, okay, hold on a moment. Okay, the moment has passed and I have pulled the Molex connector off. And so now the card is pretty much just free floating and we can just disconnect these two MFM ribbon cables. Let's be really careful with this. I've already parked the mini scribe drive before doing this, but don't hurt to be safe. Oh yeah, these are stuck too. Wouldn't blame them considering how they've been on this drive for who knows how many decades at this point. Alright, hold on a second again. <laughs> and there we go. It's And I bumped the tripod. So yeah, MFM on one end, which you can see right here. IDE at the other end, and you can see the drive's own actual controller board underneath all that as well. So 
Let's just put this off to the side. And let's flip this over now. And let's see. Okay, that's that's nice. So I can in fact just screw it right on because the screw holes match up. Just gotta there we go. Just gonna put them on lightly or loosely for now and then tighten them later. And I've also read in someone's blog where they were trying to do this very same experiment that it might be necessary to change the jumpers on the Western Digital card. Though, so I'm not entirely sure of that. And that's what I'm going to be testing out now, because there is only one jumper here, and there's only two possible configurations. Unless I solder on more pin headers. Anyway, let's just make sure that I didn't mess anything up. It looks fine, so let's tighten these screws. And apologies for not doing this on camera. I'm just holding it in my hand so that then it's a little bit easier to reach. Okay, that should be about secure enough. Now we just flip the cable over. Plug that in. And I bumped the tripod again. Now I plug the other cable in as well. And power pass through goes right here. A little bit tight of a fit but it should work. Okay, and now let's hook it up to a computer and see what happens. And so here we are again. So now we'll just connect the IDE cable to this. And I know for a fact that <laughs> this most likely done support two drops on a single ribbon. So obviously I am not connecting any other drives. And I just gonna also make sure that this is lined up correctly. I do not want to un accidentally fry this. I'm just gonna take a quick look at this cable because keying and all. Okay, so that's just gonna connect with this then. Okay. So now we can turn on the power and see what happens. Oh wait, no, <laughs> I almost forgot to connect the main power to this. There we go, that's hooked up. Okay. Let's see what happens. It definitely makes some interesting sounds when spinning up, that's for sure. So, let's see, I have written on this bag here what the CHS values should be for this drive. So, it's going to be 615, 417, so I'm going to have to enter that in manually. Oops. User, so six one five four seventeen, and this drive also auto parts, so I don't quite think that it's going to be necessary to do anything about that. And we'll set it to normal mode as well. And there we go, capacity of twenty one megabytes. So let's quit, save and exit. And before we do anything, I'm going to see if 
I can access the drive at all in DOS without a lower level format. Most likely it won't be able to, but who knows. It'll be interesting if it does. Zoom in a bit on this. Skip the memory test. The fact that the drive hasn't done anything suspiciously bad is definitely a good sign so far, so I'm happy about that. And then there's the floppy drive. So we're just gonna be booting into DOS 5. Ah, yeah, primary hard disk fail, so let's enter setup. Gonna have to do a low level format. Press on. Oh, hard disk install failure. Press Okay, so maybe we do have to change the jumpers. I did not mean to press stop recording, but I was just about to say, let's just turn off the system and... Oh, I should not pick up the drive while it's running. Anyway, it, it is parked anyway, so... And it's lifted as well, so hopefully that doesn't do anything. Okay, jumper position has been changed. Let's start this back up again. And if you hear clicking sounds from, from the drive, that's actually the so-called headlifter mechanism that Lapine slash Kyocera uses in these drives, and it's just a thing that prevents head crashes, basically. So, yeah, portable drive stuff. Let's see if this works now. If it says something about an error or whatever, then... Okay, let's enter setup, low level format, hard disk install failure still, hmm. I do have one last thing that I want to try. I have Seagate's hard drive formatting tool, or low level formatting tool, on this HDD utils disk as well. And even though it's branded by Seagate, it does seemingly work with any drive in general. So we will try using that and see if that does anything. And since obviously this drive didn't come with its original controller, it's not like I'll be able to recover any information off of it anyway. So let's just type dir, and there is Seagate format. The ATFMT4. Oops. Huh? There we go. Third time to charm. And now I will select drive zero and custom. Total number of cylinders is 615. Total number of heads is 4. And sectors per track is 17. Oh, seems to be working. Or at the very least, it recognizes something. It's doing something to the drive. I don't know what. I think it's just scanning for track 0. Ooh, why is the video so grainy right now? I do not know. Anyway, let's do format verify. No. Yes. Yes. And let's do three. Oh boy, huh? Okay. Seems to be working. Oh boy, it's working. Okay, well, I guess I'll come back to you later if something happens because I do not want to leave this recording for the entire time. And wow, that is some washed out color right now. I need a better camera than this phone. But anyway, if you look a little bit further up close, you can kind of see the colors finally starting to come through. So there's no defects and it's able to scan through the drive sector by sector and it's doing the format. 
So hopefully once this is done, we'll have a working drive and we'll actually prove that we can use other drives with the MFM to IDE card. Okay, so the Seagate low level formatting tool ended up spitting out a lot of read write errors, but apparently it was able to format enough that the BIOS now recognizes it, so I think we'll go ahead and try using the BIOS formatting tool now since that's a little bit more generic. And also I changed the pre-comp to 128 because it didn't seem to like zero. Anyway, let's, okay, drive C. Auto scan bad track list, so that's already set. Preformat zero, let's do yes and yes. And yes again. Okay, so it's just testing transfer speeds now for the interleave. Looks like interleave two is the best option here. And there it goes, formatting. Once again, I'll get back to you once it's done because I do not want to record all this footage. But let's hope it goes well. Alrighty. And now we have finished our low level format. And as you can see, there are very few bad tracks, though there are still some bad tracks. And hopefully that bad track on cylinder one head one is not going to interfere with anything because now, of course, we're gonna install something on the drive and see what happens. And hold on a moment while I get my tripod again. All right, okay, let's exit now. Save and exit. And we can switch this back out for our MS-DOS 5 floppy disk. Just waiting again. But, I'm okay, so it doesn't complain about a bad hard drive anymore this time, so that's good. And it seems like we're booting into DOS as well. Ooh. <laughs> it seems to be working. Just going to F disk. Of course, there's no partitions. Let's create some partitions. And it's making the partition. Yes. It's working and I'm happy. Okay, partition has been made. Now we will do a format C slash S to install DOS onto the drive. And I should probably oil the bearings in the spindle motor of this Kyocera drive as well after I'm done because I really do not like the sound that it's making right now. It is very concerning. Just gonna whip the back to load for a moment. Okay. Let's see how this goes. Yeah, there's this like momentary metallic screech that comes on and off with the drive right now. Okay, yeah, there's the bad sectors. So, despite being in pretty good condition physically, on the outside, 
on the inside, I think it has seen some damage, considering how this originally was most likely some sort of laptop hard drive. So, I wonder what the capacity is going to be like after it's done formatting and setting aside the bad sectors. <coughs> anyway, it's formatting now. So, that's definitely a big improvement over how it was before. Looks like it's almost done. We'll see if it'll be able to boot soon after this. Okay. Let's see. Okay, so we only lost about one megabyte worth of space. Okay, so I have a bunch of junk files on the disk right now from doing some other stuff. Um, yeah, let's just take a look at C right now. What do I want to copy? Okay, so I'm just going to copy few basic things. Okay, and now let's restart and try booting from the drive. So I've taken the DOS 5 disk out. I'll do a Windows 3.1 install later for another hard drive noises video, most likely. Looks like it's about to boot. It's booting. Hey, it booted. Okay. So that is definitely a good sign. It means that the um the boot area is thankfully not damaged by that bad sector on that first cylinder. Let's run some utilities. Let's see, I Let's do HD motion. Exercise the head a little bit. There we go. Oh, <laughs> there's a bad sector right there. I like to run HD motion as a way to exercise the drive mechanism a bit. Get it to you know, seek back and forth and everything, and then random seeks as well. It's also a decent benchmark as far as disk access time goes, because, you know, it has to do all the seeking and stuff, and depending on how long the program itself takes to finish, that's pretty much your score. Another bad sector, and another. Okay. 
And a couple more. You can really hear the drive head working right now. And also the, meta the metallic screeching that I should probably fix with some oil in time. But the drive works. The card works with other drives besides the mini scribe one. So that's a good sign. Eventually, if I get another MFM hard drive that isn't either 10 or 20 megabytes, I'm going to try this again, but with that drive to see if that jumper is for translation or just setting between 10 and 20 megabytes. But so far, at least, I have confirmed the exact same conclusion that the person who wrote that blog came to. And it is that, at the very least, you can use other drives with the MFM to IDE adapter so long as they are either 10 or 20 megabytes. They also didn't have any other capacities to test with, so I will once again be doing that if and when I get another MFM drive myself. Ooh, this is really exercising it here. <laughs> Look how slow that's crawling. Yeah, the boots. I'm happy about that. Alright, and now that the head is getting back to the middle area, it's definitely moving a lot faster than before. Here's the random seat test. It almost looks like stars going past the screen right now. Just little blips of light. Granted, that's partially because the camera isn't actually all that focused right now. <laughs> Alright, and it's done. And now, there's one last thing to do. Even though I'm pretty sure that this drive does self-parking, I'm going to park it anyway, just in case. There we go, it's parked. And now, let's turn off the system. And there we go. Whoa, what is going on with the camera right now? Huh? What's going on with the right side of the camera? What is this? <laughs> I think my camera just died. Well, that's fun. Now I really need a new camera. <laughs> and as one final note to this video, here we have it. Windows 3.1 booted and working on the Kyocera drive. It's a little bit slow, but it definitely works, so that's good. And I already have sound drivers installed as well, so... That's it. Thanks for watching, and until next time, have a good one. See ya!